have some tenants who have been hiding sometimes in your body, other times in your dwelling places. They hide to afflict you and you do not notice that they are. The older generation tolerates them and say what we are going through is because of age. So when you are old enough, you have all these symptoms and all these things. But we do not realize that God did not design our body for sicknesses and diseases. And therefore this morning before we do anything at all, as many of you as are baptized in the Holy Spirit, filled with the Holy Spirit, I want you to let the river flow from your mouth to make this atmosphere uncomfortable for any demonic spirit, spirit of infirmity. Let's connect heaven this morning like never before. That there will be no room whatsoever in our bodies, in our space. For any spirit of infirmity afflicting God's people in one form or the other. Jembros teke brahma yaba. Lord, this day in the name of the Lord Jesus, we stand in agreement in one accord that this space, this auditorium, this territory, number 30 kudrat abiola way, every inch of every space here in the name of Jesus, we declare it a forbidden territory to demons, to sicknesses, to diseases. They will have no place to hide in the name of Jesus. Let your fire expose them this day. Every one of them as they begin to scream and to leave God's people. Lose your grip and hold upon them. This is a new day, is a new season. No room for sickness, no room for disease, no room for ailment, regardless of our age. Everyone that appears in Zion is strong. We lay claim to the strength of Jehovah. Let your strength be made perfect in everyone's weakness today in the name of Jesus. Let the feeble become strong. Let the sick become whole in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the sacrifice on the cross of Calvary. You paid fully for it. Our diseases and sicknesses were put on you. Isaiah said by your stripes we are healed. Peter said by your stripes we were healed. And between we are healed and we were healed, we stand today to lay claim on divine health in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your power flow in this place. Let your power flow in this place. Let your healing come in this place. We call, we call for signs and wonders. Yes, Lord. In this place, let your presence show. Yes, Lord. In this place. Just like the day, 
Whether you are sick or you are well, you are not leaving this place the same way you came. Amen. Things bothering you that you cannot share with anyone. The yoke destroying, body removing part of God will dismantle them in the name of Jesus. You are going to leave this place better than you came. And all the glory, all the honor, all the praise, and all the adoration we go to our God. Can I hear a good amen this morning? Somebody praise the Lord. We thank God for the unique opportunity once again to learn at the feet of the Lord. The subject of today's Bible study is transition to Zion, our spiritual pathway to good health. Transition to Zion, our spiritual pathway to good health. It may take four sessions at least to cover the nitty gritty of this subject. And no matter how long it takes, we will take our time to ensure that everyone is grounded in this truth, this subject of divine health. Can I hear amen? What is our topic again? You are reading it and you're saying it like you don't mean business. What is our topic again? Transition to Zion, our spiritual pathway to good health. I was speaking to Mrs. B yesterday. She said, I'm going back to what I used to be. She was wondering, is that not backsliding? No. She can testify that for the first 15 years of our marriage, I never tasted a tablet. And now I've listened to all kinds of people. And I'm not saying they're wrong. I have a vitamin box like this for money and supplements for the evening. If I miss them, I'll say, oh, okay, I'll do it tomorrow. Keep on missing them and keep on going. I say, you know what? I'm not asking you not to take your own supplements and if your medication to discard them, don't misunderstand me. I'm saying I'm going back to where I used to be, where I experienced divine health from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. I'm going to eject every trespasser around my body, around my mind today in the name of Jesus because my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. There's no room for sickness. There's no room for disease. There's no room for ailment in my body. I refuse to let them stay. 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 Our topic again, transition to Zion. Our spiritual pathway to good health. The word transition simply means change from one condition to another. Change from one condition to another. People of God, Jesus the Lord, read to the hearing of all in Nazareth the reason why the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. His declaration in his home base is contained in Luke chapter 4, verse 16 to 21. Listen to the Lord Jesus. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found a place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me 
Because he has anointed me to be anointed. He's anointed me so that people will know that I'm the anointed one. Anointing that is not put to use is of no use to anybody, not even to yourself. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he closed the book and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, I can't hear you. Mm -mm. I can't hear you. When? Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your understanding. When you hear it and understand it and run with it, the scripture is fulfilled. Can I hear a good amen? amen. My prayers I teach today is that the sick will return home healed. Yeah. <laughs> And I don't care where the sick is in the world that is connected to this service. You are going to jump up, carry your bed, and go. In the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that needs to be strengthened will be strengthened. The things that are not working will begin to work. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are going to rise up from your bed of affliction. You are going to be made whole from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. In the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' name. As I teach you today, the sick will return home healed. The oppressed will be set on liberty. The captives will be set free. The community online will receive their healing and deliverance. Wherever they may be hearing and seeing me now, regardless of distance between us in the mighty name of Jesus. People of God, if everyone in this auditorium will ask his or a neighbor on the right and on the left where he or she has come from, except you live in the same house, I'm sure we all have come from different places within or outside of Lagos Metropolis. Please help me check. Help me ask your neighbor. If it's not your wife and you're not living in the same house, say, where are you from? Enuguabo. Where are you from? I can hear Pastor Bola saying I'm from Ikui. And I can hear his neighbor say I'm from Akumojo. Uh -huh. Where are you from? And the community online are from within Nigeria or in the diaspora. And except each person indicates, only God knows from how many nations people are part of this Bible study right now. The same goes for where we all dwell, whether or not in high or low density areas, and whether or not hospitals, clinics, or health centers are within our reach. In addition, you find out that in some houses or even in some mansions in your neighborhood where you live, there are people with different ailments, sicknesses, or diseases. Some of these diseases are infectious. Others are not infectious. Some are terminal. Others are not terminal. There are also curable and incurable diseases. But dear friends, do you know that there is a city in this fallen world where the inhabitants live in good health so that no one in that city can say, I am sick? I'm not sure you know. 
I repeat myself that there is a city in this fallen world where none of the inhabitants can say, I am sick. Please permit me to describe this wonderful city and point out how you can relocate from Akonjo, from GRA Kenya, from Okoba, whether old or new, from Onibongo, from Egbeda. <laughs> How you can relocate there to save yourself and your family from ailments, sicknesses, and diseases. How many of you would like to relocate there? Can I hear a good amen? Amen. Please hear me carefully this morning. This is not some wishful thinking. We are not dishing out some pious hope dishes just to give you hopeless hope. If you can carefully follow me, I will describe the city to you in the following 10 easy to remember ways or points. Just 10. How many fingers do you have? Each finger will be represented by one of the points. And you must remember them all the time to tell every sickness or disease. What do you think you are doing? Number one. The city is called the city of the great king. Psalm 48 verses 1 and 2. Great is the Lord. And greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in his mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth, is Mount Zion on the sides of the northern city of the great king. Is Mount Zion on the sides of the northern city of the great king. The city is called the city of the great king. But you see in the scripture we just read in Psalm 48, it says, is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city? Is it a mount? Is it a city? Is it just a mountain or is it a city? (laughs) From the psalm we just read and the song we just sang, the real name of this city is Zion which physically refers to both a hill or a mount in Jerusalem and to the city itself. But the name Zion is also used in a general way to mean holy place or kingdom of heaven. This particular Zion is the focus of my teaching today. Not that I'm unmindful of the inhabitants of Jerusalem who are personified as a daughter of Zion. This generally refers to Jewish people. I'm talking about Zion, the kingdom of God. Beyond the hill, beyond the mountain, and beyond any physical city. You're going to find out as we go. Number three. God Almighty is in the palaces of this great city and at the same time, God is known as her refuge, which simply means those who attack Zion will have God to face. If a citizen of Zion is in the battlefield and is a tiny little boy, a teenager, and you are Goliath, a man of war from your youth, run for your life. Because you are not facing man, you are facing God. David said, you come against me, against me with swords and spear. I come against you in the name of the Lord of hosts. The God of Israel, whose army you defy today. Psalm 48 verse number 3. God is in her palaces. 
He is known as her refuge. This is beyond mountain or city. We'll soon arrive at a place in the New Testament that it will be clear to you that it's a place called Zion for God's people to dwell. Number four. If you care to know, it is the Lord himself who brings people into this dimension of the spirit and he recruits even backsliders from cities and families to bring them to Zion. I hope you're listening to me. Who goes out to recruit people? It is God Almighty himself, the Lord himself. He goes to a city. He goes to different families. And he recruits even backsliders to bring them to Zion. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 14 to 16. Oh, your heart will be filled with joy today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every guilt you have carried is going to roll away. I can't hear your amen. amen. Return, O backsliding children, says the Lord. For I am married to you. I will take you one from a city and two from a family. And I'll bring you where? I'll bring you to Zion. And I will give you shepherds according to my heart. Who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Then it shall come to pass when you are multiplied and increase in the land in those days, says the Lord, that they will say no more. The ark of the covenant of the Lord, it shall not come to mind, nor shall they remember it, nor shall they visit it, nor shall it be made any more. Friends, those who are brought into Zion and are well fed with knowledge and understanding, by shepherds after God's heart, ultimately become the carriers of God's presence so that the ark of the covenant will not need to be made again. Putting woods together and calling it the ark of the covenant is history. When God lays hold of these backsliders from different cities and families and he brings them to Zion, he will sit them in their fold and he will give them shepherds after his own heart. To feed them with knowledge and understanding. They will not be dismayed. They will not be afraid. And they will lack nothing. And then when they are well fed. They become robust. And they become carriers of God's presence. The question we honestly need to ask ourselves is. If we are one of such restored people. How then can we be the carriers of his presence? And at the same time, the carriers of ailments, sicknesses, and diseases. Somebody shout abomination. If Dagon could not but bow to the ark of the covenant until it was completely broken, how could sicknesses and diseases not bow and be expelled from the bodies of those who carry the presence of God? 1 Samuel chapter 5. I'll read all the 12 verses there. I'm going somewhere. Then the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it from Ebenezer to Ashdod. When the Philistines took the ark of God, they brought it into the house of Dagon and set it by Dagon. Dagon was not just an idol. Dagon was a god. And when the people of Ashdod rose, arose early in the morning, there was Dagon falling on his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. <laughs> in Jesus' name, every knee should bow. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, every knee shall bow. 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 
keep standing, keep standing for Samuel chapter 5 again. And when the people of Ashdod arose early in the morning, there was Dagon. I want you to begin to imagine the name of your sickness, what the doctors diagnosed, what name they gave it. You are now the carrier of God's presence and the name of that sickness is standing before you. And when the people of Ashdod arose early in the morning, there was Dagon falling on its face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. So they took Dagon and set it in its place again. And when they arose early the next morning, there was Dagon falling on his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. The head of Dagon and both the palms of his hands were broken off on the threshold. Only Dagon's torso was left of it. Let's read on. Therefore, neither the priests of Dagon, ha, your doctors who said it's over, they are going to change their mind. Neither the priests of Dagon, nor any who come into Dagon's house, tread on the treasure of Dagon in Ashdod to this day. But the hand of the Lord was heavy on the peoples of Ashdod, and he ravaged them and struck them with tumors, both Ashdod and its territory. And when the men of Ashdod saw how it was, they said, the ark of the God of Israel must not remain with us. For his hand is harsh toward us and Dagon our God. Therefore they sent and gathered to themselves all the lords of the Philistines and said, What shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? They've called all the consultants. They've looked at your body. They've taken your blood sample. They've said everything they like. They're about to change their mind this day. In the mighty name of Jesus. And they answered, let the ark of the God of Israel be carried away to Gath. So they carried the ark of the God of Israel away. <laughs> so it was after they had carried it away that the hand of the Lord was against the city with a very great destruction. And he struck the men of the city, both small and great, and tumors broke out on them. Therefore, they sent the ark of God to Ekron. So it was as the ark of God came to Ekron that the Ekronites cried out saying, they have brought the ark of the God of Israel to us to kill us and our people. Ladies and gentlemen, it was just wood. But the tablet of law was in it. The presence of God was in it. So they sent and gathered together all the laws of the Philistines and said, Send away the ark of the God of Israel and let it go back his own place so that it does not kill us and our people. For there was a deadly destruction throughout all the city. The hand of God was very heavy there. And the men who did not die were stricken with tumors. And the cry of the city went up to heaven. There was no more digging to listen. All the the, the lords of the Philistines did not understand what was happening. Today I decree. Today I declare that every spirit of infirmity within your bodies afflicting you, they be bound and expelled in the name of Jesus. Because you are a carrier of God's presence. Every symptom, every ailment, every sickness, every disease, by whatsoever name it is called, Jesus has received a name that is above every name. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is the Lord. To the glory of the Father, can I hear? Amen. amen. Let me demonstrate how you can be in the church and still be bound by spirit of infirmity. Look. Chapter number 10, 13, I beg your pardon, Luke chapter 13, from 10 to 16. Now he was teaching one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who had what? Who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. Tell your neighbor, I'm bank, what you Behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. And was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. What do we extend to such people? Instead of ministering to them, we extend, extend sympathy, uh, compassion. Uh, sympathy is actual pity. Because compassion, when it goes into action, it produces results. 
But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, how long ago have you been suffering? How many doctors have attended to you? I don't care their profession or professionalism. I don't care what color they went to. I don't care how accurate they are. Woman, you are loose from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her. And immediately she was made straight and glorified God. But the ruler of the synagogue answered with indignation. Because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath. And he said to the crowd, there are six days on which men ought to walk. Therefore, come and be healed on them and not on the Sabbath day. <laughs> the Lord then answered him and said, hypocrite ruler of synagogue. Does not each one of you on the Sabbath lose his ox or donkey from the stall and lead it away to water it? So ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, who bound the woman? What was he called at the beginning? Spirit of infirmity. It is Satan trying to hide, to cut short your life in the name of Jesus, who bruised his head on the cross of Calvary. I come against Satan in your life today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it, for 18 years. Be loose from this bond. On this, you are loose from your bond. In the mighty name of Jesus. Today we make CGCC a forbidden ground, a forbidden territory to spirits of infirmity. In the name of Jesus. If anyone carries such spirit, here, you are set free in Jesus' name. If you carry such spirit to afflict others, you are going to scream, you are going to shout, you are going to roll, you are going to fall because the power of God is present to heal. People of God, turn your water on. Let the water hose be on. Pray in the power of the Holy Ghost. Everyone hiding devils here in the name of Jesus. Any known devil hiding and biting and, and, and frustrating and, 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 and hitting God's people, afflicting them in the name of Jesus. I come against you with the power of his resurrection. Be bound, be bound, be bound, be cast out in the mighty name of Jesus. Mambros take a baba soturia. Jere baba 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 There's no room for your oppression in this territory. It's a forbidden territory to demons, to demons of affliction, infirmity. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. For those online, receive the same deliverance right where you are, right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Several years ago, I was conducting a crusade in Ilaro. Very early in the morning, I told my wife, make me a cup of tea quickly. They are coming to arrest me. She said, who? I said, just make me a cup of tea. She made a cup of tea, and I had a cup of tea. As soon as I put the cup down, there was a knock at the door. A police officer, security, they came and said, I know you are coming. Let's go. They said, we have uh, authority to tell you to stop the crusade. I said, you don't have such authority. I said, if you, let, if you stop or mess it up with me, or mess up with me, your entire clan will be wiped out. He went in and consulted and came back and said, go. Listen to this. The day before the crusade ended, I was preaching on the podium. And I was declaring healing to whoever can hear my word. The son of that police chief was paralyzed on his bed. 
the word went through the window to heal him. The father came back to thank God for not stopping the crusade. Nobody will stop your healing today. Nobody will stop your deliverance today. No force of hell can operate in this atmosphere today. In the mighty name of Jesus. You may be seated. Point number five. Because of the grace and mercy of the Lord, the backsliders brought into Zion are forgiven their iniquities. And as a result of that forgiveness, none of the inhabitants of the city can say, I am sick. Isaiah 33, verse 20. And then I'll read verse 24. Look upon Zion, the city of our appointed feast. Your eyes will see Jerusalem, a quiet home. A tabernacle that will not be taken down. Not one of its stakes will ever be removed. Now, will any of its cords be broken? Verse 24. And the inhabitant of Zion, we not say, I am sick. Why? The people who dwell in it will be forgiven their iniquity. I don't think you got that. Hey, something is about to hit you. I want you to read verse 24 in the message translation. Verse 24 in the message translation. It says, no one in Zion will say, I'm sick. Best of all, they will all live guilt free. Stand to your feet. Any guilt you have been dealing with, any guilt that is always reminding you of what you did wrong, what you did not do right, how you messed up, every guilt you have been carrying, from this day forward, you will live guilt free. In the mighty name of Jesus, I decree, declare, prophesy over your life, you will live guilt free. You ask me, where do you get such authority from? Straight from the Lord Jesus. John chapter 20, verse 19. The disciples were afraid, including the apostles. They went behind closed doors and hid themselves there. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. In this service today, you'll encounter the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace to you. As a father has sent me, I also send you. And what would they do? And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. The day of Pentecost had not come. Receive the Holy Spirit. And he said these words. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. In the name of Jesus Christ, every sin and guilt that is bugging you, that is hindering your prayer life, I decree and declare they are remitted on earth, so they are remitted in heaven. Be guilt free in the name of Jesus. Your sins are forgiven you by the one who became sin for you, so that you might be made the righteousness of God in him. No more guilt. No more guilt. No more guilt. I don't care what it is and what it was. I hear loud and clear, discharge and acquitted, discharge and acquitted, discharge and acquitted. There is now no condemnation to them who are in Christ. You are not bound by the spirit of sin, the law of sin and of death. Now you are prayed on a higher law, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Your sins are remitted, your sins are forgiven, no more guilt, no more condemnation. Be free in Jesus' mighty name. Number six. Once a person is upon Mount Zion, 
both deliverance and holiness become easy. And possessing one's possession becomes the order of the day. If you manage to get to Mount Zion, you don't need deliverance minister. The moment you get there, because we are going there, as soon as you land on that mount, deliverance and holiness become normal. Possessing your possession become the order of the day. Ha, ya, ya, ya. Mambros take it, Baba, 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 Sutria. Obadiah, verse number 17. Obadiah 17. But on Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness. The house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Standing on the mountain Zion. Standing on the mountain Zion. Standing on the mountain Zion. We are going to worship God. Hallelujah. We are standing on the mountain Zion. We are standing. Standing on the mountain Zion. Yes, we are standing. Standing on the mountain Zion. We are going to worship God. We are standing. Standing on the mountain Zion. We are standing. Standing on the mountain Zion. Yes, we are standing. Standing on the mountain Zion. Come to worship God. We are going to worship God. We are standing. Standing on the You know why it's difficult for some people to worship God? Their bills, school fees, rent, unemployment. They have no money for transportation to church. Why? Because they are not on Mount Zion. They have not possessed their possession. Today, whatever is hindering you from worshiping God the way you want to, is taken out of the way in the name of Jesus. <laughs> whatever is hindering you, from worshiping God the way you ought to and the way you ought to is taken out of your life in the name of Jesus. Number seven. In addition to the six things I've earlier mentioned, the Lord has chosen Zion and has desired Zion to be his dwelling place. That is his home and his resting place forever. Now for some of the time. How many of you would like to be neighbor with God? <laughs> and I say, who is your neighbor? I say, my father. <laughs> my father is my neighbor. We live in the same place. Psalm 132, 13 to 14. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling place. Days is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. Imagine where Christ dwells. Imagine where the Father dwells. And leukemia is coming to knock at the door. Faith is going to answer it. It's going to flee back. I don't care what disease. I don't care what name it is. The moment you dwell in Zion, you are dwelling with God. He is a refuge of the city. He will not allow any ailment, sickness, or disease to come near your dwelling. In the name of Jesus. Not only that. Number eight. 
He, the Lord, will also abundantly bless our provision. The word our provision there means supply of food. And we satisfy a poor with bread. Psalm 132 verse number 15. Psalm 132 verse 15. I will abundantly bless our provision. You have your Bible. There's annotation one there. It will say, annotation one will take you to supply of food. I will satisfy a poor with bread. In the early 90s, I kept on telling you that a day is coming when a loaf of bread will sell for 1,000 naira. But we are not going to beg for bread. We will own the bakery. The day is here now. How many bakery owners are here? Stand to your feet. If you are a bakery owner, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are going to bake bread for others. You are going to give them to eat. What was prophesied back then, the reality has come now. In the name of Jesus, you will lack no good thing. You will not lack for bread. In Jesus' mighty name. Point number nine. Above all, the Lord will clothe a priest with salvation. It's not Bishop Brigament. What they will wear is called salvation. Saved! You know, it doesn't matter when you are thoroughly saved and you wear that salvation. Any mosquito carrying any parasite, if it comes near you, it is electrocuted. The Lord will clothe our priest with salvation and our saying shall shout aloud with joy. I'm not sure those saints are here this morning. <laughs> they shall shout aloud with joy. In Jesus' name. Now, if you look at that scripture casually, you don't really understand the depth of its meaning. This point nine is very important because of the prayer of King Solomon, the prayer he prayed at the dedication of the temple he built for God. These Psalms were rooted in that prayer. Second Chronicles 6, 40 and 41. Now, my God, I pray, let your eyes be open, let your ears be attentive to the prayer made in this place. Hold on. Let me read from the beginning again, verse 40. Now, my God, I pray, let your eyes be open. Let your ears be attentive to the prayer made in this place. Now listen to the prayer. Now therefore arise, O Lord God, to your resting place. You and the ark of your strength. Let your priest, O Lord God, be clothed with salvation. And let your saints rejoice in goodness. Can we appropriate this prayer? For CGCC this morning, I want you to pray with me, Lord. Let your eyes be open. And let your ears be attentive to the prayer made in CGCC. Now, therefore, arise. Oh, Lord God, to your resting place. You and us. The ark of your presence. We carry your strength. Let your priest, O oh God, be clothed with salvation. And let your strength, your saints rejoice in goodness. I want you to begin to rejoice. The goodness of the Lord is upon you. The goodness of the Lord will overtake you. His goodness is upon you. The blessings of his goodness are upon you this day. In the mighty name of Jesus. Number 10. Number 10. Finally, 
Somebody say finally. Regardless of where you live. Regardless. Is okay. In the name of Jesus. Loose your grip and hold upon her. Come out in Jesus name. Finally, regardless of where you live, regardless of where you have come from this day, we all can move to Zion. I can't hear you. We all can become inhabitants of this great city who live in good health, have abundance of bread, so that none of us will ever say again, I am sick. People of God, do you know that the price for our transportation and relocation to Zion has already been paid? The price is the blood of Jesus. The blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. Hebrews chapter 12, 18 to 24. The price is already paid. We are not of them in the wilderness. We are not on Mount Sinai that catches fire. There is no mountain of fire in this place. We are the fire on the mountain. For you have not come to the mountain that may be touched and are born with fire and to blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words so that those who heard it begged that the word should not be spoken to them anymore. For they could not endure what was commanded. And if so much as a beast touches the mountain, he shall be stoned or shot with an arrow. And so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I'm exceedingly afraid and trembling. But you have come. I can't hear you. I cannot hear you. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You see, it's not Jerusalem. It's not a mount or a hill. It's a dimension in the spirit. You have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. The blood that Jesus shed for me. We're back in Calvary. We're back on Calvary. It's the blood that Jesus be spread from day to day. It's the devil who is gone. Oh, the blood. move in and live in Zion I can hear you Hebrews chapter 12 verse 22 Hebrews 12 22 how soon but you have come you are not about to come you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God what do you do 
every hindrance, every stumbling block. I plead the blood, the blood of Jesus, the blood of sprinkling that speaks better and the blood of Amen. If the blood was shed by Christ, what in this whole process is our side of the baggage? Our side is simple. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. All you need to do is to hear the heavenly voice. May your ears hear his voice today. In the name of Jesus. Hebrews 12, 25 to 29. See that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth. Much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised saying yet once more I shake not only the earth but also heaven. Now this yet once more indicates the removal of those things that have been shaken. As of things that are made, that the things we cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom, we cannot be shaken. Let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Because our God is a consuming fire. Do you see the key there? The moment you learn to love God and serve God. To love people and serve people. And the blood of Jesus is answering for you. Every stumbling block will become a stepping stone. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every mountain we move. In Jesus mighty name. Healing becomes your bread. In the mighty name of Jesus. I decree declare. The Lord will bless your water. The Lord will bless your bread. And it will take sickness away from you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say with me this morning, we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. We are part of a house that cannot be broken down. Today, Sunday the 16th of July 2023, by the grace of God provided for me through Jesus Christ my Lord, I have relocated to Zion. The city of the great king. I relocated from GRA. Mention where you are living. I relocated from GRA. To Zion. As an inhabitant of Zion. I declare. That my iniquities are forgiven me. And therefore. I live a guilt free life. According to God's word. Consequently. Divine health is my portion. And I have abundant provision. Hereafter, I will not say on any occasion that I am sick in the mighty name of Jesus. May the good Lord bless your water. May the good Lord bless your bread. May he take away sickness from among you. In Jesus' mighty name, and the people said, Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody give him shout of praise. Praise Him in the house today. Thank the Lord for who He is. His mercies endure forever. Hallelujah, somebody. I can hear your hallelujah. Bye-bye to every other place in Nigeria. I now live in Zion. I've relocated. Satan can't find me. Sickness can't find me. Disease can find me from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. I am free. 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 In Jesus' mighty name. Amen.